Last month was a rough one for Monero users after the Kraken exchange announced that they would be delisting Monero XMR from their services at the end of the month. So make sure you withdraw any Monero you might have there to a private wallet before October 31st. We'll discuss the delisting problem more in a bit, but there's also some news that I think is worth celebrating. Chain Analysis, the company that famously won the one and a quarter million dollar IRS contract to find a way to trace Monero transactions, had an internal video leak where they were showing people how you use their tool. So the good news is there isn't any breaking of cryptography that's involved with the Chain Analysis software. All of the tactics in that video that show you how to trace Monero transactions have been known about for years and have actually been addressed by the Monero devs in different episodes of Breaking Monero. Which once again, I recommend all of you go watch if you really wanna dig deep into how Monero works and how to have good OPSEC with it in video format. But real quick, I'm gonna go over the chain analysis techniques and how you can defend against them. The most important detail, if you take nothing else from this video, is to only use Monero nodes that you trust because malicious nodes are able to grab your IP address and wouldn't you know it, malicious nodes are the key component to chain analysis tracking Monero transactions. Now, unfortunately, the majority of Monero users don't run their own nodes because to do so, you need at least 60 gigabytes of blockchain data downloaded to your device for a prune node and 200 gigs if you wanna run a full node. This is especially burdensome for mobile users in a world where expandable storage via SD cards is becoming rarer and rarer. And this is probably why all the mobile wallets for iOS and Android that I'm aware of don't even have a built-in option to run a local node like the official desktop wallets do. Although you can technically run a local node on an Android device with enough storage if you download the daemon separately through Termux, but the daemon is also going to drain your battery a lot quicker, so I really recommend running your own node on a device that you can leave plugged in. That's also gonna give you better uptime for your node. Now, if you can't run your own, you could hide your IP with a proxy or a VPN before you connect to a remote node. That way, if the node is malicious, they lose their most important tracking metric. In the chain analysis video, there were a number of transactions that were believed to be from admins of an illegal site on the dark web who happened to be connected to a compromised node. But at several points in the video, the chain analysis person would look up the IP address they got from them and it would belong to a proxy or a VPN. So they still couldn't even confirm the location of the target until one day they slipped up, connected without a VPN, and then they were able to confirm that they were in Colombia. and then who knows what happened to the admins after that. Uh, so in the chain analysis video, one of the more disturbing things I noticed was the RPC request that they were using to get IP addresses seemed to be coming from node.moneroworld.com, which is actually a round robin DNS that points to several different Monero nodes. Now what's really concerning about this is node.moneroworld.com is in the list of default public nodes in several very popular Monero wallets. So not only does chain analysis run bad nodes, but they've managed to infiltrate the Monero community to some degree, you know, typical Fed stuff. So there's definitely been a lot of Monero transactions already that ended up going through those poison nodes and are probably still being analyzed, um, but what these malicious nodes do, besides just logging your IP address, is they generate decoy outputs for your transactions that have already been spent, which means 
any law enforcement that analyzes that transaction on the blockchain with the chain analysis tool can automatically ignore the decoy outputs and focus on the real one and follow where it goes. And they can keep following transactions these ways as long as the nodes are processing them and what they're hoping to get, or at least the way it looked from watching the chain analysis video is they want to get a real IP address for you so that they can actually go raid your house or spy on you or whatever. Remote nodes can also learn the last block that your wallet synced, which basically tells the node when you last used your Monero wallet. And that data could easily be correlated with transaction data from controlled purchases and sales on a dark web marketplace. And that could even be something that's passively observed because on a lot of marketplaces, I've noticed that the vendors list how much inventory they have. And so if you assume that there's no shrink in inventory from people getting high on their own supply, a decrease in inventory means an increase in sales. So once again, run your own Monero node. Chain analysis is basically useless if they can't poison your decoy outputs in the transactions. And even then, like I said, the key data point to connect those transactions to a real life identity is the unshielded IP address. Or of course, the exchange could potentially be subpoenaed if they have KYC, but you shouldn't be dealing with KYC exchanges in the first place. Now, a pretty easy way to defend against the IP logging without having to fuss with a VPN or running your own node is by only using Monero nodes that are on a dark web. So if you visit monero.fail in your browser, there's a list of different remote nodes you can use and you can filter for ones that are only on Tor or I2P. If you're on a desktop, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you check the SOX5 proxy option in the Monero GUI wallet, which can be found under settings and interface. And make sure that the IP address you put here is 127.0.0.1 and set the port to 9150. Or if you have a standalone Tor daemon running on your PC, just make sure that Whatever port you configure that on is the same port that you set here. But if you're just running the Tor browser, then this setting is going to automatically bind the Monero wallet to that Tor connection. Just make sure that you keep the Tor browser open and connected in the background. Of course, if you're on Android, you can use Orbot to proxy any application over the Tor network, and then in your Monero wallet, choose one of these onion nodes, ideally one with an up-to-date block height and a good uptime history. Now there's still a possibility that these onion nodes here could be controlled by chain analysis in that they might still use poisoned inputs on your transactions to see where you're sending Monero to. But I think that that's a little bit less likely than with the ClearNet nodes because again, chain analysis would lose the opportunity to log your IP address with Onion nodes. And also it's more likely that people are gonna use ClearNet nodes than Onion nodes because of all the additional steps I just talked about to use them. The last bit of advice I have is to be very careful when using exchanges and swap services because interactions with those are sometimes easier to observe on the blockchain if the transaction fees and unlocking times are using non-standard values. There's actually options in the chain analysis tool to flag that to make it easier to differentiate different kinds of transactions. And I also wouldn't be surprised if a lot of exchanges are connecting to remote nodes and not using their own one. I don't really see any reason why they would need to run their own node. And if you want a conspiracy theory that'll really keep you up at night, the most popular exchanges that deal in Monero could have an unwritten, undisclosed rule that all of their Monero transactions have to go through compromised nodes that the feds can monitor for compliance purposes to see where funds are going into the exchange from and coming out of. So if you want to swap your Monero, don't do it from your main wallet. 
transfer the funds that you want to swap to an intermediary wallet first, a one-time wallet that you're gonna get rid of after you're done using it and then swap from there. Same thing when you receive funds from an exchange. Don't have them deposited right in your main wallet. Receive them to an intermediary one and then transfer from there. Default transaction fees in the official Monero wallet are less than half a penny last time I checked. So your freedom is absolutely worth paying a couple extra Monero transaction fees and using those temporary wallets. But honestly, the best thing to do with your Monero isn't to exchange it at all, it's to spend it. That was the original point of cryptocurrency and properties of Monero like the tail emission, low transaction fees, and excellent fungibility make it one of the best cryptos to spend. My online store, Base.Win, accepts Monero for all of its products and you get a 10% discount whenever you use it at checkout. A lot of people are wondering how they can get Monero if it's being delisted. Well, that's the answer right there. If you have a store or you provide any kind of paid service, you can start accepting Monero right now. So stay safe out there, practice good OPSEC, and have a good rest of your day.